Hello, this is Bruce the Accounting Guy again. We're still working on inventory analysis and we're looking on to evaluate inventory now the last way, which is the average cost. And to me, average cost is more like a bowling average. If you know how to calculate a bowling average, you can do average cost. If you're not into bowling and you're more into baseball, it's more like a batting average. Either way, I guess I struck out on that. But let's continue on with average cost. All right, again, we use the same set of numbers that we have been using in all of the other items. And let's get into now, what do we do for the average cost? We don't have a first in, first out. We don't have a, a last in, first out. To average the cost, what we're saying is, is how many units do we have? And how much did it cost for all the units? And we simply take the total units and divide it into what it costs. So now again, as I said, before you do anything, LIFO, FIFO, or the, the, the average cost, you always have to extend out everything and get your total cost because this is your total goods available for sale. And you also have your total units. Once I have my total units, I also know that if I sold 400, I mean 550, I can subtract it from what I had available, and now I know I have 450 ending units, and that's what we're calculating. But what did it cost for the 1,000 units? Well, it cost $12,000. So if it cost $12,000 for 1,000 units, let's simply divide 1,000 units into 12,000. And here I go. I have to take the 12,000, I divide it by 1,000, and it cost me $12 per unit. Now, when we do some of our problems, it might come out with pennies. It might come out to $12.32. And if it comes out to more than three decimal points, just round back to two though, okay? So it's gonna cost me $12 per unit. I said I had 450 units, so I simply multiply the 450 units times 12, and I come out to 5,400, and it is my ending inventory. And of course, we already know the calculation that total goods available for sale minus our ending inventory, here it is, gives us our total goods available I mean, our cost of goods sold. And that's what we'll take into our income statement. So there's our cost of goods sold. Now let's jump over to this next little um, illustration right here. And we have Houston Electronics. We have a condensed income statement. And what we have to look at is, is that we're now it's, now it's taken all three that we've already done, all three calculations, FIFO, LIFO, and average cost. And notice that it's still 11500 for sales. That would represent a real cash inflow. Depending on what method that company uses, that will determine their ending inventory and their cost of goods sold and ultimately their net income. So again, here is their beginning inventories. Here is their purchases. We add them up. Of course, all three, no matter which method they would use, would all have a total goods available for sale of 12,000. And then we determine the cost of goods sold, just like we did in the it did today for uh, average cost, and just like we've done in two other previous videos for first in, first out, and for LIFO, last in, first out. Here's the numbers that we determined as cost of goods sold. Here they are. There's the 5,800 for FIFO, the 5,000 for LIFO, and the, um, I'm sorry, this is the ending inventory. I apologize. We determined the ending inventory here of 5,800 for, for FIFO, 5,000 for LIFO, and 5,400 for the average cost. Again, remember, the smaller our ending inventory, the greater our cost of goods sold. And this number here, again, is the largest for LIFO, as we discussed in the LIFO um, video. Um, notice that FIFO is the other direction. And then average cost, since it's taking an average, notice that it does fall in between. Okay, when we do subtract these cost of goods sold from these sales dollar amounts, here's our gross profit. That means our markup, what we've actually made. Again, notice LIFO is the least and it would produce us the what? Again, the least income, therefore the least amount of tax, and FIFO, of course, would be greater. Now, this would always turn out this way as long as our inventory prices are rising during the year. It would be the inverse if our inventory prices were decreasing. So does that mean if we're using LIFO, and all of a sudden one year the prices head the other direction, should we switch to FIFO? Well, we'd like to, but we can't. 
under generally accepted accounting principles and because of consistency, you just can't wake up one morning and say, oh, I've had a bad hair day and I want to switch from one method to another. You can't do that. You actually have to stick with what you have. So you have to think very carefully as to which inventory costing method you're going to use when you start your business. And that's the job of your accountant. You need to get a good accountant. And once you have a good accountant, they can help you determine that. Again, notice that all of this was manipulated, and I hate to use that. Maybe we should use the word massage, depending on which method we had actually chosen. So again, this is just to illustrate that we can actually change net income, and we can. And again, though, in reality, no matter which method they pick, they still had a real cash inflow of eleven thousand five hundred out, and that they really had purchases of the year of eleven thousand dollars. So our actual cash outflow. Our actual net cash outflow was still only 500, but for income purposes, this is what we massaged it to be, depending on the method we had. I hope you have gotten a good taste of these three inventory methods. There are many, many more inventory methods. If you go on in your accounting career and you take that intermediate accounting course, you will learn a lot more of that stuff. And I'm sure that you all are so excited about this stuff like I am that you just can't wait to finish this course, take principles two, and go on to intermediate accounting. So that's it for today. And from Bruce Free, the accounting guy, see you real soon.